we have assembled a mighty team of three core team members of three different content management systems. Um, we have Benny Mack from Typo3, Typo3, sorry. Where did that come from? Um, we have our very own Sebastian Kurfus from NIAS and Yannick Witschi from Contao. And they sat down together for a while and talked about um, their respective open source systems, their, their uh, CMSs during the times of Corona. Um, we're gonna have to add real quick that uh, when this recording was made, our um, audio problem with the artifacts hadn't been fixed yet because at that point we didn't have the powerful big blue button chat yet to solve all our problems. Um, so we are gonna be experiencing those artifacts again, unfortunately. But that doesn't mean that you can't fully enjoy this talk of three very bright minds sitting down together talking about the challenges that we have been facing in the past couple of months. Enjoy. Hello and welcome everybody uh, to this uh, combined talk um, for NEOS Conference Online. Um, I'm Sebastian Kurfürst and I'm here with two very special guests, uh, with Yannick Vici from Contao and with Benny Mack uh, from the Typo3 community. I'm really happy uh, to see you here. Hi. So Hi. <laughs> Hi. We, we thought it, it would be a good idea to talk a little bit about uh, what, what uh, the Corona crisis has done to our content management systems and also just talk a bit about our general like uh, strategy and our general uh, visions and the ideas we are currently having um, because we feel we all felt that uh, the interchange between content management systems is something which uh, we could do more actually and we can learn from each other and um, it's uh, it's a really great pleasure to have you both here on on the show so welcome um I would uh, just like to start with a short question, um, maybe maybe Yannick into your direction. Um, in which way did the last few months um, have um, influenced you um, professionally or personally um, in some way? Well, first of all, thanks very much for having me and having the Contal community on that, uh, that call. I was very excited to come to NeosCon to see you guys in person actually Benny I have never met in person and it's yes. been on my it's been on my list for a very long time and I was really excited to to see you all and um kind of bummed that it didn't work out but maybe for another day um how has it affected I guess personally it was um I'm Swiss. I'm, I, I live in Switzerland, so I guess it was kind of the same as for you guys in Germany with all the lockdown and uh, it was strange, right? We, we could still do sports. We could meet in groups of a max of five people. So um, it was just for me being a, a very social guy, I'd say it was a bit strange and I had to go jogging on my own all the time so uh that was that was strange <laughs> but um <laughs> things get better now and i'm i'm happy um professionally i have to admit that we had a few uh, well actually jobs we lost yeah from from the especially from tourism um sectors that that was a bit harsh but then on the other hand we uh, got other jobs or you know e-commerce stuff so it kind of balanced and i guess i i will i will not complain because i think there are sectors and companies that have been hit a lot harder so um yeah and for the contao community i guess it was a special time but it was also very calm i feel like i guess people just focused a bit more on on family and and health that's that's a good thing too and it was just overall development activity was a bit lower, but yeah, that's about yeah. my impression of, of it. <laughs> Thank you. So what about you, Benny? Um, I would say I can, I, 
I can share similar um, um, patterns that I've seen both like, of course, personally, I switched to home office now, like with three kids. Uh, it's, it's fun. Um, and it's actually good. Um, I, I found that I, I actually save time working from home. Um, and it also applies to, um, a lot of the, the travels I did for open source, um, you know, meeting other people. Um, I could join a lot of, uh, online meetups. Actually, I would love to do more <laughs> uh, and to attend them, but now it's actually so easy and possible before I had to travel to Dresden for like six hours and to, to give a talk. Um, and now it's, it's more common to actually say, Hey, just join us, uh, tonight and, and give a quick session on this type of three user group or any web meetup, which is really cool. So. That actually also feels like it's, it's, yeah, more calm, but also, uh, less stressful, uh, as for the traveling. So that's, that's nice. Um, and, um, people figure out that they're actually the ways, you know, um, of course, most of our communities are uh, German related <laughs> or German speaking, but, um, it's actually much easier for other people from other countries to join um, any uh, developer meetups or uh, meetings or um, yeah, I know I've also worked with other uh, content management systems in the U S uh, that's now like, okay, that's no big deal to get a code sprint going because we're just, uh, just setting up a call and that's it. So that's, that's really cool. So um that's that's the good side of it uh, but also um i also feel like a lot of um it, it's time for open source content management systems or contributions to find a better way to um to work together again because it feels like it's it's calmer in in the development and the contribution way and it's also harder to do onboarding because it's more anonymous and it's it's just nice to talk to people on events on camps and get in touch with each other and then it's like hey you're a cool guy i talked to you for like half an hour how about we'll set up something and get going and that's not possible right now so i don't know how that will turn out yeah yeah i i i, I think for me it's pretty much the same what you both described and so on the one side so i'm also having a, a kid and uh like the time when he was at home and was not being able to go to to kindergarten uh, was uh very intense just because you had to take care of him and to work somehow and uh, i mean i just worked so we, we we split it in half my wife and me so we so i worked like four hours every day or something so which was barely enough to somehow get the most pressing things done for the company but was of course not nearly enough to do like open source work or to do these kind of things um but on the other hand um, I, I think we still arranged ourselves pretty well when after some time it, it got better and better. Um, what was quite interesting for me, uh, I personally wanted to just try out this year, like how it would feel to work from home office for a longer time, just to see how it, if that would work out. And, and it, uh, it, I didn't expect that to, to happen like in the beginning of the year already, basically, but, but that was the good thing for me. So I now know <laughs> that this actually will work out and, and, and that's, quite nice on the other hand it's of course also nice to to see some more people um also back in the in, in the office so we in Dresden at least have uh, we have had one case i think in the last uh, seven days or something so we're having a really really low level right now so that's why um we also having a few people being around in the office right now um Right. And, and community wise, uh, it, it was interesting because on the one side, um, it also felt to me like more silent in a sense. But on the other side, uh, we also had, I think, three online meetups now, which is way more than we had normally, I think. I, I mean, or like regular meetups and, and they were really crowded. So from 20 to, I think, in the biggest one, we had 60 people, which is, of course, a huge, 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 huge audience. Um, and uh, that is, I think, something we will definitely learn from that uh, in the long run because I think this format can actually also really work well, work out well in the in the longer run. And on the other side, um, I also felt that like in the team there was a little less activity, but I think that's actually wrong. I think people who had kids had less activity, but people who didn't 
uh, some people even said, you know, I'm really focused now and I'm now having time and these kind of things, <laughs> which is <laughs> interesting for me to think about. But of course, it makes sense. And and we still, I think we what still amazed me is that we pulled off, I think, a few releases, so one major release and some others still. So there were people really active and and that made me really happy personally so that, you know, life goes on in, in some sense. Um, yeah. Um, so that's that's quite quite funny. I, I think it's so interesting because um when when we when we talk about like our communities, um do you think that the um like um, I think on one side a community is always some kind of closed thing, you know, that that like uh, we say we are the people from Neos, you say from Contao or from Typo 3. But on the other hand, I think we actually we have so much in common, but it's often overlooked and that's i think a pretty big pity um what are like the feelings um uh, you are having on that and i i would be especially interested in you benny because i mean you have been on the neos conference last year as well um so so um it would be interesting for me what your thoughts about that are yeah i i think i i i don't know if i told you last year but uh It felt very uh, welcoming the, to be at the NeosCon, and um, I figure there are usually two kinds of people uh, that I talk to. It's the one, oh, you're doing Neos, and oh, you're doing Pepper 3, and you're like, um, you're in the box already. Um, and oh, you're still doing Typo 3, you're doing the old coding stuff, and um, yeah, you're in a box. But then there are people who are like, really open-minded and also see um there are also people who are doing type of three and neos and then um they they have a much better understanding um what toolbox they use for what um problem to solve so um in that regard i really uh, like the the collaboration and also the the let's say brainstorming or mind sharing on on topics that we all face and i'd like to have that more with contao too <laughs> <laughs> what about your experiences uh, yannick do you have other or experiences with other communities in some sense or is it um is it um i mean not more in the traditional way basically yeah so i mean i'm swiss so we live on an island it's just us and nobody else <laughs> no i mean i'm joking of course we um We want to interact more with all these communities, and I think it actually changed a lot over the last five years, starting with when we released Control 4 back in 2015 or so. It was a, it was a while ago. Um, and we started integrating Symfony, uh, Symfony components, and so you can meet us from the core developers team you can certainly meet us at uh, official symphony con so if you want to meet me in person please do come to the symphony con in december as for now it's still scheduled and i hope it will take place um this is symphony life in in berlin you yeah there was opportunity to see us i wanted to go to some php conferences but it's just um i guess it's the, the problem is with traveling you know um it's yeah i i mean i love to see people in person but then again traveling five hours into this country and then back it's not it is uh exhausting yeah, it is time consuming um and it's also environmentally unfriendly sometimes depending on where you have to go um yeah but certainly i also feel like the whole php community starting with composer nine years ago started to have the means to actually work together and share libraries and this took a few years to kind of uh, start off and right now we have millions of packages i feel like and that's that's great so there's a lot of ways we can actually collaborate and i guess we're already kind of doing that maybe you, you even don't know because we're using the same packages somewhere in the background and you just Uh, just using them without knowing. That, that's totally true. I think uh, Composer really changed the game um, uh, in, a, in a very positive way. And I think it's so interesting because sometimes you see still people ranting about it, which I always 
find kind of strange. And I mean, I, I know Jordi, for instance, he was at one of the earlier NEOS conferences and he, he gave a talk there about like what it means to be an open source maintainer. And I mean, I think we all feel him and we understand him. I know that talk, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and he's like, um, and, and, and it's, it's so funny because, um, of course, I mean, like in every project, not everything is like 100% perfect and all these things, but still it, it pushes the, the boundary so much further. So that is, a, that is a really, really good and important thing, I think, as well. Yeah. So, um, by the way, you can also ask questions, right? So if you have anything in, on, on yeah. your mind, then just, just, just shoot out. <laughs> um, so so what, is, um, what is like the technological um, or, or, or the thing which currently um, motivates you or which, which, uh, where, you, where you burn for in some sense or the, the, the topic where you say, oh, this is the thing I'm currently really looking deep into and or which transformed my thinking in the last few months or weeks or, or years. So is there anything where you say, oh, well, this, this topic might be technological or not is something which where you say, oh, well, this is something um, really important uh, to me. <laughs> Benny's around. <laughs> I don't. Um, so, um, actually, uh, the the COVID nineteen time for me or was also a time to reflect on things. And for Typo three, we had a lot of um, refactoring times now. And um, I'm actually um, thinking about the the time after that. And um, one thing um, that all of our communities and content management systems and also like Drupal, WordPress and, and Sulu and who else is there uh, struggle with um, is that there are a lot of solutions that are um, that are really, really easy to use, like really, really easy. And even WordPress, uh, I think, has um, with a Gutenberg editor gets in a direction that, that's nice. But still, it's it's a bit complicated. Uh, you have to understand how it, how the system works. And then there are a lot of solutions that are really just SaaS based that uh, do the job for you. And not just you know writing text or adding images, but building forms. So you have like SurveyMonkey now or uh, Google Spreadsheet or whatever, and you do everything SaaS based. And one thing that they're really really good at is user experience um, or yeah, there it's easy. You don't have to explain it. So I like that. And um, I think all of our open source projects have one advantage that um, you're not the product or your data is not the product. And that and it, it still doesn't even cost money to use open source software. So <clears throat> one of the things that excite me is how can we build something that has such a great user experience? Um, for the editors or for the users, <clears throat> but at the same time, you host it on your own and you're, you own the data. And that, that's something, um, that most of the SaaS based solutions, um, don't have an answer for. And I think there's a shift towards that in a couple of years. So I'm looking actually into ways to, to improve the user experience, like, Coding is nice. I, lo I love coding, <laughs> but at the same time, um, um, yeah, that's that's a topic I think is relevant, of course, for Type of Three, but um, yeah, for for everybody to improve. I, I think what is quite interesting on that, I mean, um, that I mean, we started Neoths. I mean, as most people probably know that. We have our roots in the Type Three community, and of course, uh, we we started fresh, or we try to start fresh, also looking at the user interface. But still, of course, we now know like what mistakes we still did along the way. So um, people sometimes complain about some things that some parts are slow, for instance, or don't feel snappy enough. Um, and uh, I think, on the other hand, what is um, uh, it is still so amazing that. I mean, people don't need to be taught, at least to a very big extent. That's a big, a big push, I think, and a big motivation for people to use it. Um, and the funny thing is, uh, to speak for Neos, we always thought we we need things like lists, like 
handling lists of things, for instance, and for a very long time, and we started building prototypes and all that. But but um, and and there are some use cases where that that would be really useful. But on the other hand, it was funny because we we pushed the boundaries what you can do just editing your content on the website further and further. And and I think we are still even you know we 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 didn't touch many things you could do pretty easily like I don't know dragging and dropping images to your page or whatever. I mean you know these kind of things would be actually definitely possible and 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 it's often a lack of time or a lack of priorities so to speak i mean it's mostly things where i'm like oh yeah i actually would really like to do it but i i don't know when <laughs> <laughs> i get it i mean that's probably the main issue for all of the open source contributors right there's always ideas there's always something to do and you just have to find the time to do it and or somebody is actually paying you for something and then you get more time, right? You do it. You don't have to do it in your spare time and um, or you have a company that pays you to do open source work, which would be the absolute ideal uh, situation. Um, yeah, I guess for, for me, um, what's exciting currently is actually to see things like these happening, this interaction, so that's not not technical stuff, but I, I feel like open source in a lot of ways is open source is politics to me. I mean that's that's uh, <laughs> uh, coming back to maybe what you you were talking about, Jordi. And I mean, there's always people complaining, and you can do whatever you want to do. That's there's always someone in the back shouting for no reason, um, maybe because they have a bad day. I don't know. Um, but, but I find that we have become, as an open source community, I feel like we have become pretty good at, at handling these people and staying safe and making sure we're a welcoming community that we can, and, you know, we don't care about race and all these kind of stupid things. It's just, we don't care. We just want to improve the product. And that's a beautiful thing to see and so we can i actually i do see or i do feel that we are you know the majority and if there are stupid people then they are we cannot we cannot get rid of them we can just try to ignore them and be stronger as a community and i find that very exciting because it's not just it is in it and it is in open source of course but hopefully maybe we can make it spread so that yeah, yeah, that, no, that that's yeah. something that's really exciting for me yeah yeah that that's interesting because uh, for me it's also like the thing i mean i'm i have i'm now how old i am actually 30 30 <laughs> i do have to uh, i'm oh, counting I, I every single time two in a week or something <laughs> or two weeks so i'm still 31 yeah, it, might, it might be right. I think yeah, that's 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 about it. So and I'm I I I started with typo three. I think I think when I was fourteen or fifteen. So I'm doing like open source more than my whole more than half of my life. And um, I think the the and of course it had you know it had its ups and its downs. And I did more and I did less face face by face obviously. But um, it was uh, interesting that for me the the main driver was actually not building a content management system but just being in touch with so really good people who were able to well inspire me and to to make make it possible for me to learn new things and and i think that is still what keeps me in the community but not just in our community but also like in the broader community because uh, i feel that uh, uh like when talking to you for instance um um there is so many thoughts you have been doing uh, which because of your different background, I can learn so much from you, and that is totally exciting, actually. And um, on on the other hand, I think for, um, for what also excites me personally, so we are, um, um, so we have a tradition of of doing big rewrites <laughs> in, in in Neo. <laughs> so we have done, for instance, <laughs> and we started with an Ember JS based uh, backend uh, JavaScript backend, and we switched to React uh, completely, which was a huge undertaking. And uh, currently we are undertaking, like we are replacing one of the core pillars of the system, which is the content repository in NEOS, um, which basically stores all your content in the tree structured uh, way. And uh, we are basically... Um, 
Ah, no? Ah, yeah, okay. Sorry, I just uh, didn't see you anymore, so I was just asking if everything works. <laughs> so, um, so um, for the content repository, we actually... Um, uh, the first version we are currently running is totally tied into Neos and Flow. And uh, in the version we are currently building, uh, we we tried very hard to do it as independently as possible. And the way we are building it is actually as a plain PHP package. So, of course, we are also integrating it into Neos, but it, it should run in any Symfony. You can run it in a Symfony container, for instance, or in any other dependency injection system. And I think that is, for me personally, a really important thing um, because I feel like our industries somehow converged on good standards, so to speak. So I think, you know, stuff like dependency injection is not really a big question anymore because people are actually using it in one way or the other. And also um, some things which, for instance, are also... Um, um, so, so And the experience, for instance, developing Symfony and developing Flow is not that different. It, it's only really just small pieces right now it was i think it was for me personally it was different when we started because there the projects had different philosophies and different ideas but that somehow converged um, because we like everybody was looking what is the other group doing and what is what are they doing well and 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 so that kind of blended into one uh, co cohesive direction and i think that that uh, makes me really happy because i also see a chance that we we will be able to drop write some code for instance because we can switch to standard standard solutions and and for instance in the symphony framework and and uh, that's something uh, which which i'm really happy so both to be able to give something back and to like the broader community but also on the other hand to to be able to integrate more in the uh, uh, um, from 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 the broader community as well and i i really hope that we find a way to to I don't know, mix and match more of these things in the future as well. So, so, um, and I'm not, not so sure how this process could actually work. Um, um, but I, I think for me personally, what would really work out would be some kind of informal group, you know, really like, like this to, to just meet once every two months, for instance, for two hours and just discuss what is currently the thing which drives you, the thing, uh, uh, the, the topic, the unsolved problems you're currently having or we are currently having and 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 I think that's that can be a really fruitful um discussion and, and it's also a lot of fun of course to to get to know everybody and that was for me one of the most exciting times uh, for neos conference uh, I think two years ago I was feeling a little i won't say bored, but it goes into this direction because we only had neos talks on the conference, so it was like you know uh, and and I, I felt like I have heard of everything just roughly already. And I was like, oh, well, uh, it, it didn't give me enough input. And that's where we tried to change that uh, last year. And we actively reached out to many, many people. And we had a gr really good, uh, um, how do you say, a really good resonance uh, so that people from other communities joined us. And in the end, we had like 40% uh, uh, non-NEOS content on the conference. And I think that was very uh motivating for everybody because we just everybody learned so much more and we got in touch with so much more people and uh, so that's something where i'm still struggling to do that in my normal business and 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 normal life i, I have to say um, um um but i i don't know maybe we just have to start a slack group in terms of like cms uh you know cms roundtable or whatever <laughs> there is cms garden <laughs> yeah, that's true yeah. Yeah. Um, but I have to admit that I'm not super involved there. That's uh, an issue. I mean, that's something I could improve on, but it's just, yeah, there's so many things you can do or should do. Uh, yeah, but that's definitely yeah, I'm, I'm not something sure where we can it, improve. It, it CMS Garden is more in the sense of like uh, marketing. As, at least that's yeah. more like how under, I understood it so far. I'm not mm. involved there, but some other people of our team are. So, um, but but I feel that something like that and the technical side would actually be also really interesting and helpful and like inspiring and, and fruitful to, to us. Yeah. Yeah, the, I think this this could work um, if they're like we all obviously solve similar issues. Um, if we find a couple of things that we all want to solve now and have an enthusiasm to that and that if we collaborate then the enthusiasm gets bigger and bigger and then 
things start to flow. And um, I, I, I had a similar experience, actually. I was at the DrupalCon last year, and somehow I got involved into a feature called auto-updates. Of course, Drupal has similar to Type of 3 has the you can run it with Composer and you can, you can run it without Composer, like WordPress. And you want to have them, uh, to have a way to update automatically. And maybe you also want to have that with Composer because some people just run their website and don't have an agency to help them update. And especially with Drupal and WordPress, they're like security attacks within like six hours after the release. And, um, they they want to wanted to to build a solution that does not just work for Drupal but for everybody in the PHP community, and um, yeah, there's like if if Type Three would prioritize the same thing as much as they do, we could collaborate there and like the rest of us too, and also find solutions for doing that on Composer. Um, I don't know, maybe Control does that already. <laughs> Auto updates with Composer. Uh, uh... No, I mean we do have we we are fully composer based and uh, we solve solved this issue of um, installing it on the web server directly for the the you know our long long time users who are not familiar with command line um, by actually ha building a, a user interface which is called the Contao Manager and it basically just is a GUI for composer and uh, uh, yeah yeah it is it is a very very complex application actually and nobody um thought we could pull that off and uh, it's some something we could we could be proud of uh, and yeah of course we had to yeah of course we had to solve that memory issue you know using <laughs> Two gigs or two and a half gigabytes of, of RAM on a regular web server is usually not possible. So that's um, why I started building the cloud resolver. And it works more or less fine right now. So that's less of an issue. So we could do auto updates, but it's just, I don't know. I mean, I, I get it. I see the security issue. From that standpoint, definitely we should do something about it. But then again, things might just break without people noticing it. So we, again, you have to then have some kind of monitoring system so that you know that your websites are still up. And, you know, there's all kind of different stuff to, to solve, especially because on all websites are, I mean, in, in our case, it's generally very little or very very few people just use the core only i guess there's always one extension or something and it's hard for us to to control or to see what actually happens if we if we just run a composer update uh, especially because right now it just pulls in i don't know maybe 200 packages because we have symphony packages and doctrine and and orm and and whatever kind of nice packages we find to solve solve issues yeah I also know that Joomla is is working on that. Sorry. Um, yeah. So I had a talk uh, with um, with uh, David um, on that, and there's also this this initiative in Germany for security something. I keep forgetting its name, but there's definitely going. I think the the cool thing is that actually, I mean, um, like. Um, I think it's totally cool that also the projects have different philosophies. So, for instance, we as Neos, we are saying you can't even download Neos without Composer. So, you know, there's not, no. in, in our sense, we just say we want to, so that's just our minimum requirement uh, for a variety of reasons. But um, obviously, the other approach is also totally fine. I mean, um, like, uh, and, and the thing is, um, so I think, like everybody has something on the table who is special or what is special. So I, I still think <laughs> this kind of just the guy for composer would be interesting to quite some people for us, for instance. So especially the people who are not that involved in the command line and these kind of things and who freak out if they see an out of memory error of PHP, then they're like they think, okay, the, the system is a bad one, for instance, right? Mm. So 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 that's definitely something which would be interesting for us, for instance, uh, from that standpoint. Uh 
And on the other hand, I think um, I, uh, Duff, for instance, I think we are doing quite, or especially is that we, for instance, provide code migrations for updates. So we have had done quite some big updates in our system. And um, so uh, where we changed a lot of internals. Um, so for instance, migrating to the PSR standards in terms of request response or logging, for instance. And uh, we were able um, to, to, to create automatic uh, updates, so which actually re rewrite your code. So you still, of course, need to check that and you need to see if that makes sense and you have to take care of some edge cases. But for instance, that is, I think, something uh, which you know, we could bring to the table, so to speak, so which is, I think, a general mechanism which, which makes sense. And, and actually, it's not that hard to do that. It's um, because, like, um, it's actually basically doing regex and string replaces. If oh, you always say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard. just, it's it's just a regular expression. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure why you say that, Benny. Are you, are you <laughs> using your own framework or are you using Rector PHP? I, I think today we would start using Rector, um, and, and uh, we actually uh, Thomas would have had a talk on Neos conference this year for mm. so we hopefully move that next year. But um, uh, we started doing our own because Rector was not available, and actually what he is doing is like way more than we are doing. So because he mm. had really you know he builds up the syntax tree and he manipulates it based on the syntax tree, which I think is a totally fantastic idea. Um, mm. um, so. We basically have built our own, which is way smaller than Rector does. Um, but the funny thing is that still with a small approach, you are able to get a lot of things done. And I think that is an interesting topic that even though it's way more simple, um, you can you can do go quite some way with it. And if we would start today, we would definitely use Rector, for instance. Yeah, And, and that's, that's, for instance, one of our problems. Um, we have uh, done quite some like groundwork, um, for instance, in terms of dependency injection or AOP or these kind of things. And um, uh, now that the other frameworks have are doing that or, or, or basically are, have, have overtaken us in some sense, in, in, in the sense because it's, it's just a bigger community, like the Symfony dependency injection container, for instance, uh, of, of course has a higher polish than ours. I mean, ours is, is a good one, definitely, but I mean, Symfony just has these little extra few percent you know which which makes it even better and better extensible and so on and for us now it's uh it is somehow hard to migrate to that but still that's something we are very actively thinking about for instance because um uh, you know we never uh, have it, our building a dependency injection container is not one of our core values because we actually want to build a content management system combined with the framework but uh, at the time when we started uh, we said we think dependency injection will be absolutely crucial, so we needed it. So that was more the sense of it. But um, so, so I, I see a huge potential that we can actually drop things in the future um, and still provide a good update path to our users doing that. Because I think I, I would personally feel very bad if we would just say, you know, the new system is now based on, I don't know, Symphony DI, and now go figure how you migrate from A to B. Probably not the best way to go. That's yeah, true. Exactly, and and, <laughs> and and the thing is uh, uh, that there's some, and and I think um, I'm I'm not sure how it's done in your systems, but um, I mean, of course, some things help, like having a clear API defined and these kind of things. And um, I remember back when I was still uh, working with Pepper Three and was part of the team there. I mean, there was no API because that just didn't. I mean, that was. It didn't even even was possible in PHP. You know, everything was public in the start, so to speak, and and <laughs> yeah, so everything was a yeah. Everything yeah, is the API. Yeah, exactly. That's just yes. and and I, mean, <laughs> I think the team uh, around Typo three has done a huge work to incrementally get that to a state where there actually is an API and and get uh, like the whole community on board there because um, maybe Ben Benny maybe you can talk a little bit about your pro or your 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 route you have been taking in this area because I think that is a huge undertaking you have been doing there, right? Um, yeah. So <laughs> that was actually the the most difficult time because we we switched to these sprint releases, uh, and then it's it's nowadays if you look it's it's similar to what to what Symphony actually does. So you have you build up uh, versions until the final LTS of that number, and uh, that's it. Uh, although we have a different different rhythm, but 
Um, I think version 10 was the first one where we actually strive for going a bit more semantic, <laughs> uh, semantic versioning style, uh, where we didn't have any breaking changes that we actually documented. Uh, maybe there are some, um, but actually version nine was the first version that were like, I don't know, a couple of days before the release, I went through every PHP file and marked classes as internal or API, um, which we haven't done before. So everybody was complaining. And now it's actually, it's much easier to define, okay, this is just, you know, it's a controller for rendering something in the admin administration area. It's none of your business. <laughs> and we don't have to write something that it actually would break because we're doing something else. And similar, and, and that's also um, crucial for, for me that backwards compatibility in regards to PHP and as a framework and as a library is actually much easier than, than having a, a product where you have something visible and where you actually render HTML in the end, uh, because then people complain that you remove the tag and that's yes. breaking a change, right? So the, so we're still in the process of actually defining every little bit of detail for these kind of things. We just excluded templates. Anyway. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that's interesting. Uh, what about you, you, Yannick? I mean, how are you dealing with like these kind of like evolving the system and, 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 and getting that done? Because I mean, uh, I think that's, it's obviously not black and white and it's interesting just to compare like how everybody is approaching it because I think there's a huge potential, at least for me, to learn a lot of there. Mm. It's never black and white. The world is full of gray shades and that's on colors. And that's colors. great. Yeah. <laughs> um, actually, we do the very same. I, I think that's an area where we could collaborate because um, Symphony, what Symphony did great, and I guess it's part of their success, is first of all, documentation. That's where they uh, did really well, I find. Um, but introducing what Nicolas introduced, this the, the BC promise, right, with the deprecation notices and the, the whole deprecation framework is just uh, it is a very simple idea, but it's very, very powerful because you can actually see what you need to do before you can upgrade to the next major version. And that is uh, just very convenient. And if you know the release cycle, that's just, it gives you certainty and then you know what you have to do in two years time and you can upgrade or you can migrate to the new way um step by step but that's i agree with benny it is a lot easier for a framework such as symphony or a programming language for that matter um because you are not actually building an application so we do have exactly the same issue. Like if I write a controller, I don't want people to use that controller because it might change, right? It's not there for you to be reused. Same with, say, event listeners or something that just, you know, write something or read something from the session or uh, authenticate users or stuff. Um, it's not there to be extended. It's not, shouldn't be extended anyway, but that's another story. Um, so we're kind of also discussing, should we introduce final and um, should we mark things at internal or do we just write it in our BC promise, which is documented? Um, there are just many, many edge cases. It's difficult to say sometimes. Yeah, it's easier for a framework, I find. I'm just thinking what would be really interesting, um, like if we would like meet at some regular basis just to discuss such things. I think would be also interesting would be some kind of wiki where you just where we would just you know link everything together so about the topic of for instance of how to how we handle backwards compatibility I mean everybody of us has it documented and it would be interesting just to you know have a list like okay Type 3 does it like that Symphony like that Contao like that Neos like that for instance because I think um that would be for me it would be interesting just to get inspiration if i'm thinking about that process you know like how are others actually doing that because i feel this is information which is not so easily accessible outside the the community like if you're in the community you actually know where to look there and and where where you find this kind of documentation 
But mm. in our case, uh, sometimes it's documented. So there's a, a bit on the website. There's something in. I think we have a forum. Uh, we have we have in our forum a pin topic about that, uh, like for the developers, like how you how we do up mergers, for instance, and and uh, where we uh, and and how we um, uh, which bugs we fix we fix and which versions and why, for instance. But that's probably nothing you would easily find, like if you were looking for that, uh, for instance. But and, and and I would imagine it would be vice versa as well. And I think it would be actually really interesting just to be able to compare these things and 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 also discuss these things and see if not just on the code side we could uh, we can collaborate, but also on this uh, like process side and like what are best practices, what worked well for you and didn't work work <laughs> for you or for us, for instance, and put that together because I think that is um, that is also. I mean, on the one side, it's harder to collaborate on these things, but on the other side, it's also easier because it's not touching the code, but the, the general experience outside of it. So that, that was just an idea, just uh, now that you talked about that and we talked about that. What do you think about that? I mean, would that be useful for you as well? Totally. We should like, we could like create a GitHub organization and create just tickets for adding this stuff and use the wiki there. You that's, don't that's need to have a lot of overhead. As yet another project to work on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, mean, uh, I think this is immer this always for me at least the question of you know like what what I get back from it uh, in, not in the sense of revenue or anything or, or but in the sense of you know having good discussions and good. Um, I, I mean, it, it then it's fun to do it and then it's then it's uh, uh, a good thing and I think. For me personally, this kind of fun is a really big motivator for me. Uh, it, it's it's sometimes it is you know coding in my silent corner and 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 dissecting hard problems, but very often it's it's discussing solutions or discussing the problem space with others and and getting new insights on that and on my own thinking. So, so I would actually be really happy to to take that up. <laughs> I, I guess it also, I mean, for me, it feels like it's also getting better. Like, um, let's say five years ago, I didn't feel like, I mean, before PHP 7, I didn't feel like PHP development was a, uh, was anything. I mean, they didn't really interact with, that's probably wrong to say, right? I, I just feel like interaction and exchange now is a lot better than it used to be. Um, so you can see on the internals mail list, you can see that uh, people from Symfony, Laravel, um, all these kind of uh, huge frameworks, um, you have people from Drupal, etc. You have people interacting with um, other people actually working on PHP itself. So I wouldn't be surprised if there was some. I mean, I know Symfony started doing some deprecation um, contract, and I wouldn't be surprised if there was more of that maybe built into PHP itself to facilitate stuff. And, and by having people using that across uh, communities, it will standardize automatically. And I think that is. For instance, what we saw with Doctrine and the sub-projects of Doctrine, like the annotations project, for instance. I mean, that's like everybody's using that syntax and that for now. And I mean, we also see there that how it flew back because I think with PHP, I don't know, 8.0 or before, I think it's yeah. 0, right? Where we have these annotation syntax in there. Yep. And I think what's always funny, I mean, um, we, we as a company are also doing projects in a lot of other languages, so especially on the JVM, so so Kotlin and Java and so on, um, but also like Go and so on. Uh, we are not that deep in the, in their communities, but still we are having really big projects in this, in like in Spring, for instance. And um, that, that's why I personally I'm I'm very anti-religious in terms of these kind of language wars or these kind of things. Because I think there's so much to learn for some, from something like Spring, for instance. But there's also so much to learn from from inside the PHP community. So um, I'm not that like, yeah. I mean, most problems can be solved with many of these technologies. But I mean, there are some things which go better with PHP or better with some other uh, frameworks. And the interesting thing, which I, I I don't really understand, is that like from the outside world, I think PHP is always still having this bad reputation. 
in terms of like, you know, it's not really object oriented, it's not really consistent, it's not really this and that, but it feels like people actually didn't check it out for, for a very long time. Uh, and, and actually, um, like modern PHP is, is pretty similar, I would say, to Spring and to, on the JVM, for instance. And, and we get, I would say, we read the same books uh, in terms of what inspires us, I don't know domain driven design or 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 the, the publications of Martin Fowler or I don't know you know these kind of architectural things um, and um, so so I think that there is a lot to to share beyond the simple um like even outside the PHP bubble for instance so um, and that's a that's a cool thing. The screen turned black it's for like, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Switch to the other camera, I would say. Probably the camera turned off. One hour. <laughs> mode. Yeah, pretty much one hour. That's that might be. Ah, really? <laughs> it's already one hour. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't doesn't feel like for me either. <laughs> that's that's the thing. I I was I was actually uh, I was actually nice. I don't have any uh, any clock here, so I was uh, asking myself like, what the time is. <laughs> <laughs> All the time. Um, really nice so um yeah so i think that's uh um, um i mean, i don't know do you have any topics still or questions or things you would like to discuss because um that that would be interesting for me and um then we'll we'll see um, um I, I think I, what i really like is that it's not just i, I feel that even in this spontaneous session actually we now have a really good idea to go forward. So that's something I would like to pin uh, in the end as well. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else? You still have topics or, this, or, or things which would be interesting or topics you would like to start up? I mean, there's so many things to talk about, right? Oh. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> I love when things like these happen. I mean, yeah, it's, that's it's, life. That's great. It's, 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 <laughs> it's the first time we're actually using the setup really in production. I mean, um, um, so as as uh, so as you you know, uh, we are pre-recording the conference. It will take place in in uh, I think uh, yeah next Thursday and Friday. So in a, almost a week from now. And um, actually, it's the first time we're actually really really using the setup in production. So it's. Uh, um, I mean, it's good that you can always hear me and I can hear you and these kind of things. <laughs> you should you should totally leave that in and not cut it out. No, 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 I, no, no. <laughs> we'll just keep it as a whole thing, and that's it. Definitely. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. All right. So, so I mean, I, I would say uh, I would really love if we could, uh, like, after the show, if we could just. Uh, change the uh, like our our uh, i mean we have our contact details, details obviously <laughs> but i mean like discuss just uh, okay uh, that we can just start this github organization and have a way where we can chat together or anything like that or communicate via github but i think that would be inter really interesting to start this kind of um how does everybody doing these kind of organizational things or also cool things and 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 pull this stuff together because i think that would be also a good, I mean, uh, it, it's a good opportunity to meet and to discuss. And I think from this opportunity, then other things can, can go forward. And that would, I would personally really love that. And uh, it would be really bad for me to just see you in one year from now on the NEOS conference, hopefully, but uh, not have any contact with you in the next year. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's always easier to talk about these kind of things than to actually do them afterwards. So, but I don't know. I don't want to stop your enthusiasm. Please just uh, go ahead. I, no, it's it's actually. Uh, I thought it was. Um, I was part of the PSL fourteen uh, working group, and that was really tough because we at some point we met every week for one or two hours, and it took like half a year. And through this process, and it was just really great to um, to see that we're able to pull that off, but also that we have a, a solution at the end. So if we just meet for casual exchange, that's nice, but then we should have a focus on one thing, and then we can yeah. actually finish. And that actually motivated a lot. So it feels similar to 
PHP fig for content management systems, I guess. Yeah, yeah exactly. In some yeah. sense, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nice. So um, then I would really love to thank you for your time. And uh, it's really cool that you were able to join the NEOS conference online. Um, I am looking forward to stay in touch with you and uh, with you too personally, but also with the others in your communities. And um, yeah, I, I would be really happy if we would, if we were able to, to uh, strengthen our ties between the communities. Um, so thank you both for your time and uh, we'll work on some technical <laughs> <laughs> details. Oh, cool. Conference. We'll probably change the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so. Great. Thank cool. So Thanks much. a lot. Yeah. Thank you very much for having us, I guess. Yes. That was cool. Really? Yes, totally. <laughs> so thank you so much and hear you soon. Bye. 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 And welcome back. And to say it with the words of a very smart person, yeah, nice. <laughs> 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 also, it turns out we never did change that camera. So if we're gone, you'll notice. <laughs> But of course, um, we are an open source project. So we, we are also very transparent um, with the things that go wrong. And as you've seen, um, as with any live project, we did have some hiccups. But um, that's live. And it's fun nevertheless <laughs> i really like the ending of that talk <laughs> um with a battery not safe warning <laughs> cool